In an analysis of healthcare data, ages have been rounded to the nearest multiple of five years. The difference between the true age and the rounded age is uniformly distributed from negative 2.5 to 2.5. The healthcare data are based on random sample of 48 people. <laughs> Calculate the probability that the mean of the rounded ages is mm, within 0.25 years of the mean of true ages. So first of all, um, we will mm, consider the age of uh, one person and the difference between the true age and the rounded age. And uh, since there are 48 people, which is bigger than 30, therefore central limit theorem will apply and therefore we will uh, really need the mean and the standard deviation. So for the uniform distribution, we can remember that the mean is A plus P by two. In this case, it's from negative 2.5 to 2.5. So negative 2.5 plus 2.5 by two, that's zero. And the standard deviation is B minus A squared by 12 square root. And so that would end up being square root 25 by 12. Now, this is the mean and standard deviation of one age difference. Like if you consider one person, the difference between the true age and the rounded age. And our data is 48. So the mean for 48, um, uh, and we are interested in the mean of the 48 ages. So you know that by central limit theorem, the mean of the sample means is uh, the same as the original mean of one, which is zero. And the standard deviation is uh, the standard deviation of one divided by square root of sample size. So that ends up being five over 24. And we want probability that um, the difference between the true age and the um, uh, rounded age is within 0.25. So it could be either side could be between negative, two point, negative 0.25 to 0.25. X bar is the mean of the age differences. So we want that to be between negative 0.25 and 0.25. So we find the z-score of 0.25, that'd be uh, 1.2 and uh, the negative 0.25 would be negative 1.2. So we actually need probability Z between negative 1.2 and 1.2. Now, uh, I, I want to make a remark about the continuity correction. Remember earlier in the previous problem, I was saying that um, if the numbers involved are too big, then it doesn't matter whether we um, use continuity correction or not, uh, which is true. But the problem I was using to illustrate that it didn't really apply there because, okay, let's go to that problem. I was using problem number 84 to illustrate that. And I said, okay, here T is less than 7,100. So it doesn't make much difference if we use 7,100.5. But actually uh, in this problem, uh, there is no continuity correction because the T was, um, the total number of hours and time is a continuous variable itself. So there uh, it makes no sense to talk about the continuity correction at all. And here we had to do the less than 7,100. Um, so in general, if a variable, if the original variable is continuous, then of course there is no continuity correction and we just use whatever we have. So the illustration which I could have used was that for problem 82. So in problem 82, uh, it was between 2450 and 2600 claims. Now, number of claims is a discrete variable. So there we could have thought about continuity correction, but here you can see that it would have made very little difference because uh, uh, of the numbers involved. You can see that if you use the continuity correction, it would change this very, very slightly. And, um, Another reason here was that it wasn't made very clear that whether when you are when we were asked that between 2450 and 2600 it wasn't very clear whether we're including 
the 2450 and the 2600 or not. So that is also another reason not to worry about the continuity correction. So basically you need to worry about continuity correction when the data is discrete uh, in case of a one way inequality. And if it's a between situation, then we would start thinking about continuity correction if we are told whether the endpoints are included or not. Although in this problem, it would have not made difference either way because of the numbers involved. So with that out of the way, let's return to problem 87. So we want probability Z between negative 1.2 and 1.2. And we can see from the picture that that's the probability of Z less than 1.2, which will be all that minus probability less than negative 1.2. And you subtract those two, you get the middle area. And then the neg less than negative 1.2 is the same as one minus probability less than or equal to 1.2. Um, <clears throat> so because see less than negative 1.2 is this one. And uh, less than 1.2 is all that. And one minus less than 1.2 is this white area. So uh, neg less than negative 1.2 is the same as one minus less than 1.2. And then these two combine to give two of less than 1.2 minus this one. And then from the tables, we can see that the cumulative probability of 1.2, let's go to the table, is uh, 0.8849. And so, returning back, two times 0.8849 minus one is 0.77, which is choice D, 